Welcome to Secrets True Crime, the Eric Cates and Gypsy story. I am your host, Amber Sitton. What is done in darkness will eventually come to light. That is the purpose of this podcast, to shine light on the story of Eric Cates, his beloved dog Gypsy, and the town of Empire, Alabama. Listener discretion is advised. The subject matter may involve violence, sexual content, murder, and adult themes. It is not suitable for younger listeners. This is our first of what we hope and expect will be many update episodes to come. In Episode 5, appropriately titled Working Theories, we discuss some theories as to potential motives in the murders of Eric Cates and Gypsy. In the months before his murder, Eric had a job working for a local business in the city of Summerton, ready to work trucks. We used the alias of John for the local business owner at the time when we released the episode. His identity has now been revealed by law enforcement. His name is James Brian Harland. If you recall, Brian Harland was arrested by the Summerton Police Department on February 5, 2015, just 43 days before Eric's murder. The Daily Mountain Eagle interviewed the arresting officer with the Summerton Police Department, Chris Price. Price is no longer with the Summerton Police Department. In his interview with the Daily Mountain Eagle, they said that Officer Chris Price stated someone reported that Harland's vehicle was stopped in the road near his place of business. Harland was sitting behind the wheel inside the vehicle. Price told the Daily Mountain Eagle that he smelled alcohol as he approached. He asked Harlan to exit his truck, and he was given a field sobriety test. At some point during this, Harlan kicked off his boots, and crystal meth fell out. The Daily Mountain Eagle reported that Officer Price stated that Harlan claimed the crystal meth wasn't his, and that he was just holding it. You know in his boots for an employee. At this point, the Summerton Police Department called a neighboring department, the Dora Police Department, and asked for their assistance. Dora responded and brought their drug detection dog. The dog did alert and police found approximately 200 methadone pills, for which it was reported that Brian Harland did not have a prescription for. The police continued to search the vehicle, and the search yielded some very interesting things. We obtained a copy of the complaint filed against Harland, and here are some of the items that were found in the vehicle or on his person. $14,800 in U.S. currency, eight different mobile phones, a shotgun, six pistols, a homemade silencer, a lot of ammunition, a digital scale, moonshine, and a ledger with drug prices. Those things are alarming enough on their own, but that's not all that was found. The remainder of the items found with Brian Harland in his vehicle left me speechless. They found sheriff's office gear from another sheriff's office in Alabama. For the record, it was not from the Walker County Sheriff's Office. They found a Sheriff's Office police officer badge, a set of handcuffs, a Sheriff's coat, a Sheriff's Office hat, and a Sheriff's Office ballistic vest. I'm sorry, I try not to repeat myself too much in the podcast, but I think it's important enough that it needs to be repeated. This man was found potentially drunk, high, or maybe even both, sitting in a public road with a shotgun, six handguns, a silencer, a fat roll of cash, hundreds of methadone pills and other controlled substances, a digital scale, moonshine, and a ledger with drug prices. Harland was taken to the Walker County Jail, and on February 13, 
2015, Harlan made bail and was released. As shocking as all that is, the end result is far more so. In the end, James Brian Harland pled guilty to four counts of possession of a controlled substance, one count of use and possession of drug paraphernalia, one count of public intoxication, and one count of carrying a concealed weapon. On May 14, 2018, Harland was sentenced to 60 months, all of which was suspended. Yes, you heard that right. Brian Harland didn't receive any jail time other than the time he spent at the Walker County Jail immediately following his initial arrest. He got off with barely over a week in jail. What a sweet deal he got. At the end of 2019, I called Chris Price, who was the former officer with the Summerton Police Department who handled the case against Brian Harland. I wanted to speak with him about the arrest of Harland and also to ask about some rumors that we had heard that Chris Price took some role in investigating Eric's murder. The conversation was awkward and strange. When I asked him if he had been involved in any investigation into Eric Kate's case, He quickly told me he did investigate the case, but he'd rather talk to the new cold case investigator with the Walker County Sheriff's Office before he released any information to me. He then stated that he wanted to speak to the investigator who handled the case and said he wasn't sure if he was still working the case or not. I assumed that he meant he wanted to speak to former Walker County Sheriff Investigator Chuck Tidwell, so I asked if that's who he meant. He stammered around and said no, but never was clear on who he actually did want to call. He used the word we when he made generic statements about his involvement in the investigation. I specifically asked who he was working with on the case, but he never gave a direct answer. During the call, I wasn't shocked that he didn't want to discuss the Eric Cates case with me, but I did expect he'd be more willing to discuss the large bust he made on Brian Harland. It was good police work, and the case was resolved. Instead, he very quickly changed the subject back to Eric Cates. Maybe Price is just a humble guy? On Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021, Chief Burnett of the Summerton Police Department announced that he and Officer Daryl Niblett took James Brian Harland into custody for felony probation violation warrants. During the arrest, Chief Burnett and Officer Niblett seized two firearms. While at least one of those weapons was in plain sight, Chief Burnett stated that Harland gave his written consent for the search. The next day, on Thursday, June 3, 2021, Chief Burnett named James Brian Harland as a person of interest in the murder investigation of Eric Cates. He also told us that there are other persons of interest who are not being named publicly at this time. 55-year-old James Brian Harland is currently incarcerated in the Walker County Jail. We are so thankful for Alabama Attorney General Steve Marshall, his cold case investigator, Special Agent Barnes, Chief T.J. Burnett of the Summerton Police Department, and some others we won't specifically name right now for all of their hard work on this case. It is our opinion that we will be giving you another update soon, and we look forward to putting some of the real names to some of the aliases we've discussed over the many episodes. If you want a refresher and want to review the finer details we discussed about Eric's relationship to Harland, go back and listen to Season 2, Episode 5, Working Theories. Michael and I are pleased to announce that we are working on a new case for Season 3 that is coming soon. We will provide further details a little later. If you have any information that could help in solving the murders of Eric and Gypsy, please call 
Alabama Attorney General Special Agent John J.W. Barnes at 334-242-7345. Or you can email me at secretstruecrime at gmail.com or call our confidential tip line at 205-282-0740. If you have any information about James Brian Harland, contact Chief Burnett at 205-648-3261. Michael and I will ensure that all information gets to the right place right away. If you are left still wanting even more content, please check us out on Patreon. We have filled it with great information about Susan and Evan and Eric and Gypsy. This podcast is an independent podcast. That means that everything that goes into making the podcast is done and funded by me. All of the investigative tools and resources are provided by Echo 7 Foxtrot. The tragedies we highlight and investigate have had a tremendous impact on the victims, loved ones, and friends. We don't burden them with additional expenses to cover their cases. We donate our time and talents because we want to help and hope to find the answers they need that are long overdue. For as little as $5 per month, you can receive exclusive access to members-only photos, videos, early access to episodes, and much, much more. By becoming a patron, you too are helping us help these families. Your support as a patron of Secrets True Crime Podcast helps us cover the expenses associated with producing a high-quality podcast, traveling to conduct field work and interviews, and obtaining the tools and equipment needed to conduct a thorough investigation. In short, your support as a patron allows us to do more for these families. Become a patron of Secrets True Crime Podcast today, and let's solve these cases together. Patreon.com slash Secrets Crime. If you are enjoying this podcast, be sure to follow or subscribe in your podcast player of choice and by giving us a five-star rating and review in Apple Podcast. I'm active on social media and often share photos of Eric and Gypsy. Follow Secrets True Crime on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Secrets Crime. The audio production for this podcast is by Kane Power at precisionpodcasting.com.